My name is Corey Bonson. I'm the resource conservationist for NRCS in Yakima. I work with Kevin there. Um, they just asked me to talk a little bit about the farm bill, uh, new farm bill, some of the changes we have with that. Um, and I'll just talk a little bit about some of the requirements and you know, like our EQIP program, Environmental Quality Incentives Program, for those that aren't familiar with it. Thank you. Okay, so what do I need to Yeah, maybe on the side. Okay. So, new farm bill stream, streamlines and simplifies uh, some of our programs. Um, kind of focused more on regional initiatives. Um, kind of maintain and strengthen, strengthen the different initiatives and kind of put some of the similar programs together so it's a little bit less confusing, hopefully. Um, like our wildlife habitat incentive program or WIP. Um, got rolled into our EQIP, Environmental Quality Incentives Program. They were pretty similar, where WIP just focuses on wildlife habitat, where uh, EQIP's more for on-farm type things. Um, and now it's just all under the EQIP program, so if you have uh, interest for wildlife habitat you'd like to do, you can sign that up under EQIP. <coughs> Though our funding pools are kind of separate for different practices, so you kind of got to tell us what you know, if you have multiple resource concerns, we're going to, if you go for an equip contract, it's going to get focused onto specific resource concerns and you know, multiple contracts if you would like. But, uh, and the program for is an army tag, spend so much money on wildlife. Yeah, I think it's 5%. I think that's on a later slide, actually. Um, easement programs, um, it's not real popular in this area, but we have, used to be like the wetland reserve program, some other ones where you can sell the, like the developmental rights. So the easements um, for perpetuity usually, um, sometimes they have 30 year, but those are all rolled into one now as well. There was grassland reserve, wetland reserve, several different ones, but it's all one easement program now. Um, so equip funding, um, as you can see, our equip funding is going to actually be going up. Um, as, as the years go by, some of the other programs, like our conservation uh, stewardship program, the funding is going down slightly. Um, but EQIP is our most popular program in this area. Um, so like I said, for the, the WIPs rolled into EQIP, and there's what Kevin was talking about, the 5% of the funding <coughs> will be for practices that are directly benefiting wildlife habitat. If you are on the reservation as well, if it's like tribally leased ground, um, the funding source is slightly different. Um, wildlife habitat is actually more important with that local working group, the local working group being statewide tribal, where here our local working group would be three counties of Yakima, Benton, and Klickitat. Um, we have a meeting once a year mainly, and we set our priority resource concerns and put specific amounts of the funding that we're going to get into different um, resource concerns. So um, if you guys as a group are seeing a specific resource concern that we're not funding under EQIP very well or you don't think it's getting enough funding, we encourage you to come to our local working group meeting or you know let Lori know or somebody else in the, your local conservation district. Um, we also have a new, in this new Farm Bill, uh, priority for veterans who are also beginning farmers or socially disadvantaged. Um, it automatically moves them to a high priority. What is a socially disadvantaged farmer? There's a specific definition on our um, applications, and I, you can look that up. Or I can, if you come into the office, I'll show it to you. Any minority that's been discriminated. Yeah, there's a, there's a long definition that's printed right on our applications now. Yeah, if you're a white male, you're not. Well, I don't like water. I'm socially disadvantaged. <laughs> it's self-certification, so okay. somebody tells us they are. Okay. Uh, 
if you've had a contract with eCook in the past, there was always a requirement that the contract actually ended or it went one year after the last practice was completed and certified. That's no longer the case. We always kind of call that the ghost year. We didn't necessarily have a lot of interaction with the person after the contract. Uh, just we're on the new contracts, so we don't necessarily have time. But um, we like to hear, you know, what worked, what didn't, as well. So, you know, after your contract is over, we, we definitely like to hear input. Though, um, a few changes. Um, the, they replaced the rolling six-year payment limitations. There was. Payment limitation. I believe the last farm bill was only three hundred fifty thousand. This one's up to four hundred fifty thousand, um, and it was it was just a rolling five year. Now it's pretty much just for the farm bill, um, two thousand fourteen to two thousand eighteen. So there's no more rolling. Say you finish it off in two thousand seventeen or something. Those wouldn't roll over to the next farm bill. Um, the adjusted gross income. Uh, requirement used to be a million, now it's 900,000. What's that? It used to be 2.5. Two point, well, I think the last farm bill was one, it's 2.5 to one before that, I believe. I, yeah. But anyway, in the current farm bill, it's 900,000. So, um, and, and it's not, it does not distinguish between on farm or off farm income any longer. So, uh, you know, if, if it, it's taking any income for anybody that's in an entity. Um, the beginning farmers, um, we have specific fund pools for that. There's possibility of beginning farmers. Um, that, that we do have the option of advance payment up to 50%, but there's regulations with that where if you get an advance payment, um, you're required to finish that practice very quickly. Um, our sign-up cutoff for the 2015 ebook was this last November 21st. Um, rumor is that 2016 is going to be July 1st, so coming up fairly, fairly quickly. Um, you're always welcome to sign up at any time, but we have what we call our batching dates. It used to be called cutoff dates, but that's where we take all the applications received up to that time. They get ranked against each other, and we fund as far down as we can. Um, some things that um, have changed a little bit too. Um, in order to sign up, before we can obligate any kind of contract, you have to have all your eligibility taken care of, mainly with the Farm Services Agency. Um, it's your farm and tracks taken care of. Um, filled out an application by that deadline, and the new thing is this Duns and Sam number, if you are an entity. Um, and I have some handouts about that over here. That's pretty much anybody that has a, a tax identification number other than a Social Security number. Um, it's the Duns and Bradstreet number. Many of you probably already have that. Um, the SAM.gov is fairly new. You have to renew each year. Um, it's just kind of a way for the government to track payments. And that's basically what our 1200 or our application looks like. Um, there's a fact sheet on that SAM and Duns. That's the one over here. Just kind of tells who needs it and what you have to do. Um, and this is what I was talking about a little bit before. We have our equip local working group pool. Um, that's just between our three counties. There's different funding pools within that. So different land uses, forestry, range. Um, it, it's more based on resource concern now, but it's still based on um, land use as well. Um, we have an organic initiative, a high tunnel initiative, an energy initiative, which I know some of you may have participated in when we had the that here, that's something that's um, popular with the dairies. Um, Sage Rest Initiative, probably not so much. But the energy initiative, I have a little bit more on here later. Um, we, we have hold downs for different practices, so you know, one contract doesn't take all of our money. Um, so for the energy initiative, what you do basically is sign up for an energy audit, and that can be for a whole farm uh, audit and it's done by a technical service provider. Um, we can give you a list of that once you get signed up. And what our um, first uh, contract would do is just basically pay for that audit. Um, and then they'll give you a list of practices that can save you energy, save you money. 
with that energy. And that, there's both uh, headquarters for your uh, headquarters and then for your landscape, so your uh, operation on the field as well. There are two different ones you can sign up for there. And those are being grouped into one, one plan now. They are grouped into one now? Yeah, so okay. an application would be for a, a whole farm. Just a whole farm? Okay. And then the second step, after you get that audit, um, you bring it in, show us, they'll have a list of practices that you can sign up for, so then you'd sign up the following year or a few years down the road. Um, you can sign up to get uh, financial assistance to put in those, uh, to address those concerns. Uh, just a website, um, if you have any other questions, uh, you know, ask Kevin or I.